All right, so it might just go terribly. It really might, but I, I want to try it. So we're going to save right here, just in case, you know, just in case. And we're going to see, we're going to see how it goes. Just without any of that extra training in Victory Road or anything. Uh, we'll just pop in and try to fight. Oh, you know what I, you know what I did wrong though? I put Firo in the front of my team. I don't, I don't need him in the front. But I guess it's not the worst thing ever either, maybe? I don't actually know. Now are you gonna die to this? Okay, good, that's what I needed. Maybe the crit was what did it, but I needed it to die, so that was okay. Now I'm hoping the Dugdria will be fast enough, because that's what I'm relying on at this point. So we're gonna X accuracy here. All right, and now, Fissure. The Jinx is my biggest concern. I feel like that's Lorelei's fastest Pokemon. I could be wrong, but I feel like that was Lorelei's fastest. So if we're able to kill the Jinx, I'll feel a lot more confident about this fight. <laughs> Our little level 39 going through taking out these, like, 53s. <laughs> I mean, so far so good. As long as it, as long as I get to move first, we know that they're knocked out. Because I used an X accuracy, so Fissure cannot miss, you know. And here's Jinx. Moment of truth. Moment of truth. All right, we win. Cool. I mean, Lapras can't be faster than Jinx, right? It's a Lapras. It can't be. All right, we're good. <laughs> So there's the trio's level 41. Awesome. And just getting faster and faster, of course. <laughs> Which is good, that's what we need at this point. We have a need for speed. All right. It's the same kind of thing here. I do want to use an ether. So let's report or restore Fissure. Um, let's get Fero back up. Like that death was intentional. Oh, for those of you who don't know, so, like, Lorelei has interesting coding, specifically regarding her Dugong, where she'll use rest on the second turn. And so that's why it was beneficial to send out Firo, a Pokemon who would die to Aurora Beam, you know? Uh, yeah, I used the Super Potion to heal two health. Um, and then use the next turn to apply the X Accuracy when I knew she was going to use rest. So, like, during a turn where I knew that I was going to be okay. Um, for this, I think that I want to use Jag. I think he'll be the best overall. I mean, the hope is that I could still use Horn Drill. <laughs> um, and hopefully not, like hopefully I won't need to use an X Speed, but considering they're gonna be a higher level than me, I very well might. Uh, we'll see. I mean, if I do, like I will. You know what? Like I'm, I have enough health where I could take a hit and you might just miss anyway. So there, I X sped first. X speeded? I don't know. And now we should be fine to horn drill through this fight. Normally you just X accuracy and then you go through with horn drill, but normally you also have like red bar health, <laughs> you know, where a critical slam would kill you. So having full health, I was a little less concerned going into this fight. Now, a fight that I really am concerned about is Lance's, because his Gyarados could murder us. Because again, normally I have a much stronger Nidoking. Um, but even with that, in order to survive Gyarados's Hydro Pump, you have to use an X Special. And if he gets a crit, you die either way. So, it could still be really bad. You know, because we're not at a high enough level, we have worse stats. Um, I have X Special, sure, but that won't let us survive it at this, you know, level 47. That's too weak, that's too low. As far as I know, as far as I recall. So, I'm not expecting that to go well. I'm gonna have Jag go up against Agatha. Um, because that's just kind of the usual thing, you know. And it makes sense. I don't think that I'm going to start with an X Special. Like, normally, to my knowledge, you do that to increase the chance of Blizzard one-hit KOing um, the Golbat. 
But given I'm at a low level, I think it would just take two blizzards anyway, so I'll just start with an earthquake. You know, I'm used to being faster than you. I didn't even think about that. Will this be enough to kill you? Okay, it was. At least there's that. That's something. So I just have to keep an eye on my health and know, like, when other nightshades are coming up. As expected. Even with a... Even with an X special, I don't think that would have been enough. Now, see, that's... That's what I wanted to avoid. Is, um... Hitting myself in confusion. But... So far, it's still working out. The Gengar coming up just has, um... You know, it's level 60 and has Nightshade, and so that could have been bad. But... We're just gonna keep getting confused, aren't we? And hitting ourselves. Now, I don't know if this Haunter has Nightshade. It... I instantly woke up. That was cool. And then I instantly fell back asleep. Darn. Alright. Well, you very well might be trying to use, like, Dream Eater on me or something, so I'm just gonna wake up immediately. Nope, you murder me with Nightshade. <laughs> was worried about that, but the fact that he hadn't used it yet, you know, I was feeling a little more confident over time. I think with this one, one to X Accuracy, and um, Fissure these last two. Because I assume I'll be faster than the, the Gengar too. Hopefully. Hopefully that's the case. If I'm faster than the Arbok, I would think I'd be faster than Gengar. Arbok in my mind is faster. But maybe not. Time will tell. I mean, I know Gengar is two levels higher than the Arbok. And like, 19 higher than me. And it is faster, so Fissure's not gonna do anything. But he's just Dream Eatering. Which sounds weird to say. But you know what I mean. <laughs> Good news, two digs will do it. Bad news, we're confused and this might be more difficult. Yeah, hmm. Okay, so now if we hit ourselves in confusion again, we're dead. I'm not confused! I did it! <laughs> we beat him! <laughs> which means we beat Agatha. I mean, I beat Gengar, him, which means that we beat Agatha, her is what I'm trying to say, just to clear up any confusion. Alright, so Agatha's down. Cool. Good fight. So, something I don't think I mentioned yet is, um... I can't use Fissure in every fight, or at least against every Pokémon, considering Fissure's a ground-type move, so even if I'm faster than the other Pokémon, and even if I use X-Accuracy, um, you know, ground doesn't affect flying types, in particular. So... Hopefully, I am cognizant enough of the different types uh, that I'll be able to differentiate that, but I am no Pokemon Master, I'll tell you that right now. Um, and I'm bound to get types mixed up. So going up against Lance, like, what is the best play here? I really am not sure. Maybe Clefable, just to try to get that Thunderbolt off, you know? But it wouldn't kill. That's the, that's the hard part, you know? Like, Thunderbolt, given the level I'm at, it, it just wouldn't kill the, the Gyarados, it wouldn't. Given that we've come this far, though, you know, I'm willing to, I'm gonna save here, you know, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna keep trying on this fight. Or, you know, if I decide to give up, if I decide I can't do it, that I'm not ready, I'll lose to him, I'll give up that money, I'll give up the items that I've used. And, uh, and we'll challenge it again another time when we're more prepared. But hopefully we'll be able to do it. Again, Gyarados is the thing that I'm most afraid of right now. If we can get past him, then we should be okay. Yeah, I mean, he's going first for sure. Starts with a Hyper Beam. Hmm. You're faster than me, though, aren't you? Well? No, we killed him! Okay, here's the thing. I switched to Jag, and I risked using an X-Accuracy, because I thought that Hyper Beam would make it so he had to recharge, but not if it finishes off the, the Pokémon in Gen 1, because Gen 1 is full of broken stuff, you know? I just hadn't thought about that. 
But I'll just take this time then. Um, where is my elixir? I'm just gonna use an elixir on Jack. <laughs> because, see, this Dragonair, it has, like, smart AI, right? Or good AI. In quotes. And so, it's trying to use moves that are super effective against me. Uh, which in this case... Oh. I don't have any means of... I have Surf, I guess. I could try to use that against... Uh, Aerodactyl. But anyway, but in this case, that means that it's trying to use a Psychic-type move, Agility. But Agility doesn't do any damage, because it's Agility. So... Oh, you know what? I've already x accuracy -ed. I could just Horn Drill my way through the fight, too. Or, like, against the Aerodactyl. Like, I don't have to worry about... I used an X-Special in hopes that I would get Surf or Blizzard to be powerful enough to take it out. But I don't actually have to do that. As long as I am indeed faster, using an, a second X-Speed to be sure, then we should be fine. But anyway, yeah. Uh, good AI is interesting in that way. Um, I don't know if it's exclusive to Gen 1, but that's at least where it's, I feel, most um, abusable. <laughs> and it's just very helpful. As you- as you've seen. Like, I could do the same thing against this Dragonite. Both of those Dragonair and the Dragonite, they all have agility, so they'll all just try to spam me with agility. I'm not gonna let you see, just cause I'm going first and I'm horn drilling him to death, but... It would have happened that way. So Jagger to level 49. And I am more confident with how this is going. There is one way, I think, at this point that this could fail. So it's probably not going to happen. But because I feel he got a little bit lucky with that Gyarados just straight up missing Hydro Pump, I am gonna save at this point. I have certainly died to my rival before the champion fight, and I don't want that to happen again here, so... There we go. Time to fight him. Um, if my memory serves me correctly, I started that Lance fight with 7 Horn Drill. Or at least I had seven after I- yeah, because I used an elixir. And I only used it two more times after that. Because I blizzarded both of the Dragonairs, partly because they were using agility so they'd be faster than me. And then I horn drilled Aerodactyl and Drag- You're not supposed to be in front! Alright. Fight. <laughs> I thought that Jag was in front. He's supposed to be doing this right now. Is that a crit? Dang, it was. I'll let you fly. Oh look, you get to avoid the sky attack. That's handy. <laughs> okay, but and then you get to avoid the fly too. Man, you're getting so lucky right now. Of course though, like now it's just gonna heal. Like you have to heal now, right? You wouldn't not, so I'm gonna switch. I'm trusting the Pidgeot's just healing. No, mirror moving. That that actually works too. Especially if you were to like heal now. So I'm gonna X speed. Yeah. Alright. So we won this then. Yeah, Sky Attack, he did it one turn too late. Oh, hold up, hold up. I did have five horn drill, but this rival fight has, you know, six Pokemon. And am I faster than the Salakazam? I used the next speed, but I am okay. Then you know what? I will horn drill until I'm out of horn drills and we have a Venusaur on the other side. And then I'll try, <laughs> and then I'll try to use an Aether. And if Venusaur kills us, oh well, we did what we could. But you could really see the how broken X accuracy was in this game, and Horn Drill in particular. And um, if you would like to see just a little bit more about how Nidoking is particularly useful in any percent glitchless Pokemon Red speedruns, feel free to watch some of my some of my videos of that, or check out my live streams when I do those on occasion. Um, assuming this isn't too far in the future when you're watching this video, but. Yeah, Nidoking is just good. You get him early on, he's powerful, he has good move versatility, and since he can learn Horn Drill, he can abuse the fact that X Accuracy just eliminates the the concept of accuracy. It's quite nice. Alright, yeah, I'm gonna... Ether's at the top. I could just try to, like, Earthquake him. 
But I'm just gonna see if I can survive this instead. Yeah, I can! He's dead! Cuz you solar beamed! You should've razor leaves, buddy! Alright, cool. Well, I'm glad I didn't do any extra training then in Victory Road, cuz we didn't need it. Riz defeated, not Riz. Heck yeah! Ah, that feels good. So now just to skip through the dialogue... I mean, hopefully no one minds, but like, if you wanna- if you wanna see the dialogue, I guess go watch another playthrough, cause... This was more of a challenge run, you know, being a randomizer and whatnot. But it was interesting because, you know, I've been recording this session now for an hour and a half, and at no point during this session... Okay, I guess at one point. Was it really- did it feel like a randomizer? Just because last session, you know... I- I reached- I had everything that I needed to beat this game. And I didn't realize that right away, you know? I didn't. I'll admit that. Um... But I didn't need anything else. Like, I checked two other things this time. I checked the secret key, which ended up being the silph scope, which was completely useless by that point. And I checked, you know, the super rod, as you guys saw. I mean, you saw both of them, but yeah. Super rod definitely more recently. And that was just the bicycle, which, at that point, I had every fly location unlocked. I didn't need the bicycle anymore. Um, but yeah, just to talk about this run really quickly, I don't think I have too much to say because I've been talking about it the entire playthrough. Um, but I, I do think this has been a lot of fun. Um, I like Red Version in general, you know, it's why I started speedrunning it, and I like it more now that I have speedrun it. <laughs> um, and so, being able to test my knowledge like this, it was enjoyable. Now, there aren't too many, like, there aren't too many key items, you know? And I am, I'm aware of that, like, there's not a whole lot that I actually had to test myself with. Um, especially considering, um, this game is relatively linear. If you were to, like, compare it to, say, an Ocarina of Time randomizer, this game is much more linear than that. But, I was surprised by it, and how I did get the item finder! It was the very first key item I had! <laughs> Um, but I was surprised, actually, by how open the game actually made itself. You know, I just thought that, again, everything up to the SSN would be, like, well, certain items, you know? Um, or basically, I at least thought that I would get the SSN ticket or cut by that point. But then instead I got the Poke Flute, so I had to venture out into, you know, an area where they were all, like, a higher level than I was, because I wasn't supposed to be there yet. Um, it was interesting. Um, that was part of what made a little bit tedious, but, you know, I hate to say that just because, yeah, as tedious as, like, any other Pokemon game, basically. And I caught up just fine, you know? I ended up being overpowered for a little bit, and then by the end I was underpowered again, but thanks to abusing some mechanics, you know, we were able to get through it all anyway, just fine. Um, but, you know, fighting the trainers just along the way, you know, sometimes, yeah, you have to go out of your way. Um, I definitely did during this playthrough. There were still certainly areas I could have gone back. Like, I could have surfed and fought the trainers along those routes. Um, I could have, once I had the bike, you know, gone and done Cycling Road. I never did go back through Rock Tunnel. I never did that. Um, I had stuff I could have done at the, um, the power plant. Um, what else? I mean, I didn't do Victory Road, as you guys saw, like, the trainers there or anything like that. Um, and of course, just wild Pokemon I could have fought. But I never really had to do a ton of that. Or at least, there were clearly places where I could have done it more. Um, so... The game provides you with, like, plenty of opportunities, I think. Yeah. So, this was fun. Uh, could I do one again in the future? I certainly could, and I would be interested, um, to see if I could do it faster. You know, if I could employ more of the speedrunning tactics that I know, or something like that. Um, and I'd be interested to see if there are ways to randomize it a little bit more, even. I don't know how, exactly. Um... One thing I think would be really interesting is if I could randomize not only the key items, like, within the key item slots, but if they could just become, like, random item balls, too. I wouldn't want them to become hidden items, you know, just where you click on a random spot on the floor and you get an item. I wouldn't want it to become that, because I don't know all those locations, but I, I would honestly try it if it were, um, it could be in any item ball around the world. As long as it fell within logic, I think that could be really fun. I don't think there's any way to do that, or any program that would do that, but... It's a fun thought. So anyway, I hope that you guys enjoyed this series. Let me know what you thought about it in the comments below. You know, whether you liked it, whether you disliked it, what you thought about this or that, etc. So on and so forth. And if you would like to see more things like this in the future, do let me know. Your feedback is important to me. I appreciate it. So thank you guys again. And with that, we're calling it here. Cue outro, go!